but I like the fact that you can create holes in the walls and shoot through those and breach walls. That's the coolest thing. Look at that guy's glass. He's Swedish. Yeah, I love it. I'm from Harlem. I'm just weird? taking a nap on these stairs right by the bubble. A lot of these video games have guns that I've never heard. Together. Magic Gun 3033. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? We are back, the guys from Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast. My name is Cameron Fath. I'm a former Army Ranger at a Second Ranger Battalion out of Fort Lewis, Washington, and I am here with my partner in crime, Israel Wright, former Green Beret, also out of Fort Lewis, Washington, deployed to Iraq in 2008. And today, we're going to be looking at gameplay from Rainbow Six Siege, team gameplay, a little bit of team tactics and stuff. Like I know it, it looks super good on paper. I'm excited to see it on the screen here and the use of tactics and team cohesion. Let's take a look at it. Right. Okay. Look at that. Good old fashioned Rappel. team action. Grappling hook. Oh, that's quite a system you got this in place. This is very there. interesting. Look, he's just walking along. Knocking out the window with a buttstock. Oh, okay. Not exactly the best breaching weapon. Cool. Breaching weapon nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> what about He's doing a lot of canting. Yeah, okay, classic well, canting. I feel like when you're walking down, you're supposed to be at the high ready, right? If you're walking with your eye through your optic, you're losing a lot of uh, visuals there. So I mean, if you're walking down here, definitely be at a high ready, but it takes a, mil a millisecond to come from here to here. Mm -hmm. And those gun hands are definitely gonna be in the thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, I can tell this fighter, he definitely knows, you know, he's got good timing on checking the corners. He knows this environment very well. Uh, obviously played it through a lot before making his own doorways, smashing through and stuff. I did a little research before we reviewed this game is, you know, you have two oppositions. So you have your defensive force and then you have your assaulting force. And like, you have a, a time period before the game actually commences to where defensive forces can set up, you know, obstacles and booby traps and whatnot. Oh. And I think that's kind of cool. Just like that wall was there, they set that up. And then the assault force can actually do reconnaissance on they can run drone footage, drone footage yeah. and like kind of see where they're setting up obstacles in order to mitigate those I like that aspect of this multiplayer I think that's super cool yeah and adds a lot of real value to it it's cool it's still got a strong community I think what came out in 2015 so I still have people come in and ask like oh are you gonna play Rainbow Six Siege I'm like I'll get to it calm down look at that guy's glasses is he Swedish yeah I love that I am from Harlem Isn't I'm that just weird? taking a nap on these stairs right by the barbed wire <laughs> I don't know why I, I don't know why I saw <laughs> Like this. Single panel this is a, a little drone. Oh yeah, MP AR33. A lot of these video games have guns that I've never heard of. <laughs> it's just like throw some words together. Magic gun 3033. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor. Another rifle yeah, 30. So he did pie that off, which is a great CQB tactic when you're essentially pieing, making a pie chart from that doorway. Yeah, because you want to be able to see the enemy before they see you. And by utilizing a pie technique, your vantage point is based off that door corner there. So I should, in theory, if I execute this technique correctly, I should be able to see their shoulder before they see me so I can engage them before they see me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's a great technique. Typically we would do it every time before we go in a breach instead of just blindly walking through a doorway. Right, you, right. you definitely want maximum security, especially in this type of environment. MP5 now, is that what we got? G8A1, never heard of her. <laughs> Looks like an MP5. He needs to get out of his optic though, because he's- Yeah, it's quite an optic you got there, son. Round four. Standing on top of the foosball machine. Yeah, foosball. Great advantage, great advantage point. Interesting, because especially if you're canting, if you're a right-handed shooter and you're canting left, to switch hands and, you know, work that corner, keep pieing that corner. We train a lot of transition drills, so like you won't be shooting right-handed the entire time, because I mean, your terrain dictates it. See, if he's on the left side of this door, right-handed shooters benefit, but if you're gonna switch to that right side, you might as well switch hands. So Interesting, less, back. I remember less training with uh, switching. Mm -hmm. I just remember that just wasn't something that we emphasized when we were training. Yeah, I mean, as time continues to buy, tactics evolve, new technology, comes out we're starting to find like you know some things that we did prior just still make sense anymore there's safer ways to do these actions like breaching everyone thinks or, i mean as far as entering everyone thinks just stack up and go in well now we're starting to find that you know that there's more threat and there's more dangerous to doing that so by doing a really nice methodical pie of that door and then entering and it's like if you're taking contact from the building and you don't need to go in there why risk entry 
And that's a lot of the things that I notice fail in training. It's just because they don't really give you this play to you know actually think on your feet. It's just like, mm. go in this building, shoot everybody in there, training completed. And it's like, you mean, okay. You mean they give them a set of rules rather yeah, than trying to a... train the principles that help to guide a decision rather than just do that thing. Yeah, exactly. Promoting more of a thinking mentality instead of just a shooting mentality would benefit you know units tremendously. Right on. Nice pistol, man. Yeah, Just I love shooting. it. Just bang, bang, bang. Cool. Ooh, we got a little uh, P90 nice. action. That's a cool weapon system, man. Bullpups. Mm -hmm. They're pretty Never used them. Yeah. You, me neither, but I, I, I appreciate the concept. Right. You can achieve, Puts everything kind of closer to the shoulder. The yeah, you can achieve a longer barrel length with a shorter gun because the feeding or the magazine and where the actual chamber is is behind the trigger mechanism. So you can get a longer barrel instead of having a magazine up here and then, you know, having the same length barrel, I can push it back and have a more condensed uh, weapon platform. But yeah, the P90 is really cool because it uses a 5.7 round, which is really interchangeable with like FN. Typically makes their weapons really interchangeable. So if I I can run a P90 and then like an FN 5.7 pistol. I can literally use the same ammo on each. And it has the velocity on that round. It's super cool too. Got him. Good call. <laughs> nice, I love the shooting through the floorboards above there. This game's cool because it has a lot of realistic tactics that you can use, like shooting through walls, which I mean, you have to be careful as long as you know who's on the other side. <laughs> You're very careful. Uh, but I like the fact that you can create holes in the walls and shoot through those and breach walls. That's the coolest thing that I found in here. You don't always have to use the front door. You can make your own. Far back. Yeah, Good communication. Little, little communication in the gamer Just world. Any team you're on, you gotta have that shorthand communication. You gotta be able to communicate well. And <laughs> I'm really surprised for a first person shooter multiplayer, there's not a lot of calling mothers in this game. <laughs> I like how they incorporate a compass because yeah. that makes, you know, communication a lot simpler, especially when you can be like, get yeah, orientation as far as where you are. And that's a big thing. One of the things that I found extremely challenging is like a team leader and when you're communicating over the radio, especially as like as far as positioning and whatnot, it's like trying to communicate, hey, I'm on the south side of building 3-2. It's like, that's really challenging. And especially when you get off the helicopter, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, <laughs> where the helicopter lands you in a different area where you think you're landing and then all of a sudden you're like what yeah is there's happening? a moment of confusion like there's there's nothing looks like how i thought it was gonna look exactly and then you're like trying to figure out on the fly where you are and where you have to go and that's and everything looks the same and it's like it's it's dark outside mm -hmm. and like there's some buildings there but you and like some of them are two stories some of them are one stories but on the grg it's just an aerial so you're like i don't know everything's just a square as far as i know it's, it's a square with numbers mm -hmm. on it and it's trying to orient yourself. But new technologies came out to where it really, like you can have a cell phone that shows you your positioning as far as real-time GPS, yeah. which is the ATAC, and that thing was awesome, it saved my ass. But guys like in your generation had to use the football sleeve with the GRG in it. And mm -hmm. that was, yep. I had to do that for a little bit before we got these phones, but that that was a challenge in itself. I've seen a lot of finding that little keyhole, you know, like that smallest amount of space possible to shoot, to still be able to shoot yeah. and find find your target, you know? Yeah, that's like, that's what I was talking about with the pie technique. It's, you want maximum amount of cover and you're finding that little keyhole where you can just, you know, put rounds down yeah. and engage your target, which is, which is great. And that's why I appreciate Firefights are all a game of angles. If you customize the gloves in multiplayer? <laughs> if you can't, I mean, you can customize those weapons, like the frosty look, the neon green and purple. Oh, but you gotta have the same glove. The one thing about video games that I'm like kinda uh, about is uh, when you're reloading, every time they're like, I shoot like three rounds, I don't want a fresh mag in. It's like, in real life, if you would do that, you just lost. You just lost that round. Or you have to reposition that in the back of your stack. But yeah. you're you're gonna have a magazine with like, that's half full. Yeah. And you can't just put a fresh one in and just expect those bullets to magically reload <laughs> themselves into a fresh mag. Mag. Right, right. Yeah, so you have to be conscious. I mean, it's always good to have, you know, 30 round mags in. Be conscious if you're doing this in real life, which I, I hope you kids are. <laughs> unless it's like Nilsen. Yeah, right. unless you're doing like airsoft, but uh, be conscious of where you put that half full mag. Always put it in the back of wherever you're going. So if you're working left to right with your reloads, put it all the way far right. We never had any, I mean, we had surveillance equipment and stuff like that they're using, but it, it took a long time to set up and tear down, and it was specifically for a certain mission. You know, we wouldn't use it in the middle of an assault or anything like that, you know. 
Yeah. Any uh, explosives experience? Any experience with any kind of finding any ordnance on site? So I know that a lot of times when we would go out, it would be it's a bomb maker. We got to get him, and then we would search the whole property, yeah. and we would dig under. You know, we'd, we'd unearth some stuff, old ordnance and stuff, and then we'd have to lay it all out, categorize it and stuff. And if it was out far enough, and we could do it, we we might just mm. blow it in place. No man, I didn't get enough uh, experience with the EOD tech. I mean, most of the time we would have EOD attached. To us, yes. So anytime we would come across ordnance in training or in real life, we would have those guys come up and check it out. But as far as me sitting there beating sweat and like trying to cut, is it red wire or green wire? No, I never had to do that. But uh, yeah, that's EOD's game. Yes. That's a complicated thing. They would definitely come down and like talk to us about you know, the type of explosions we may encounter, like how to, you know, how to identify and stuff. And we definitely, and we ran EOD lanes in training. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thank God I never had to come across any of that. <laughs> if there was any time, if there was anything we had to like blow in place or anything like that, usually our, our engineer, our 18 Charlie shit. would, yeah, would uh, okay. have more experience with that. Exactly, just got BIP it. BIP stands for blowing place. Big old magnified optic on a tiny little submachine gun. <laughs> Whatever floats go. your boat, man. That's a real uh, 1980s movie commando type of yeah. weapon right there. Just because it looks cool. You know? Yeah, it looks super cool. Let me put this giant, you know, 10 by 25 magnified optic on this <laughs> submachine gun. Because it's bigger than why the f not? Oh, get some. Oh, just waiting for him. Just waiting for him. Getting low. I like yeah. that. Out of his line of sight. There's yeah, I wish they would make dirt. like, you know, Enjoy that dirt, character had a gas mask on. I wish it would like really give you the gas mask experience of it's hard to breathe, you're hot and sweaty. It's fogging up, yeah. yeah it's fogging up. Just because it looks cool doesn't mean it's practical, man. <laughs> yeah, mop gear was, was not a fun thing to fight. You don't generally really ever want to have it on unless you need to have it on. <laughs> yeah, and even that, I'm still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll breathe some gas in. <laughs> See the pie technique. Yeah. Love to see it. Very popular here, yeah. yeah. I can see why though. From the look of this gameplay, like if you expose even your shoulder, like yeah, you're, you're done. done. Dude, it's firefights are all game angles, especially in CQB. That's why they're starting to really train. Just, you know, using cover to your advantage and not just committing to a doorway if you don't have to. If you can fight from cover, like if I can fight from that doorway and I don't have to, you know, go in and create my L shape and right. whatnot, I'm not gonna be an idiot and especially expose my oh. team to possibly taking casualties. It's like I'm gonna fight from that doorway and I'm gonna try to frag the out of that door or I'm gonna try to use any piece of equipment that'll give me tactical advantage, flashbangs, you know, my clear by fire, and I'm gonna get in there. I will get in there, but eventually, and I'll do it safe. <laughs> That's very smart. Safe for me, not for the enemy. Ooh, very nice stuff. I'm very impressed with the level of gameplay that we saw, the team tactics and pine off the corner and stuff like that. Yeah, no, the elements of this game are super cool. I think they uh, highlight a lot of important principles, especially when of CQB, and that's that's awesome. And I really like the mix between new tech and old tech and the customization that the players can use on their weapons. So that's super awesome. If you uh, want to see more game footage like this, go to Gameology's Facebook and YouTube page. If you want to hear me and Cameron talk about all things pop culture, go to the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast. And if you want to hang out with more with me, go to twitch.tv slash my happy self. We're not done with plugs yet. And if you want to check out my apparel brand, check out Kick God Apparel on Instagram or our website. It's a brand with a great cause, helping out communities here in the Los Angeles area. Thank you. Bye. Rainbow Six Siege, take three, Mark. Rainbow Six Siege, take three, Mark. Oof. 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 Oof.